And there we are. Welcome. My name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir. Um, I am the Dungeon Master and host this evening. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming in from the Burnt Coin to Shan Neo Burnt to All Day to um, Azteki. And I assume Lady Nabila and Princess Luna. Um, yes. So thank you guys for being there and being part of our active chat. Um, and uh, let's we're going we're gonna to get this game going as, as quickly as we can. Um, we are starting session one of Waterdeep Dragon, the whole royal family, indeed. Um, and are you really like royal though, Mastaki? I feel like you kind of married into royalty. Just saying. Um, just saying. <laughs> I mean, you are still an intern, so you know, put that there. Anyway. Uh, we're going to be kicking off Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which is an amazing adventure with all kinds of fun, wacky, and goofy things that happen. Um, there may be a beholder tonight. Depends on how far we get. Um, <laughs> I love saying that because everyone has the same reaction of shock and terror. Oh, no. <laughs> like, what? Um, the, the, the fun part is there was an encounter from this where when we ran this at our family table, we didn't get very far before family stuff broke it up. And my daughter looks at me and goes, we're level one, and there's a boss monster? Beholders at level one. Let's go. Yep. And she's they don't, nine. They don't really scale down too well. I think there's, like, watchers and gazers and stuff, but, like, beholders, nothing to mess around with. Well, we'll see what happens. Um and to kind of help move us in that direction, I think we need to go around the table, introduce ourselves, kind of what we do, where to find ourselves around the internets, um, if we have such presence. And it's not everybody does, and that's okay. Um, and then who we're playing tonight and why we're excited to play them. And we're going to actually kick off in the far bottom corner. We're going to let Chickadee be our first introductee. Hi guys, um, I'm Chickadee. Uh, I'm on Twitter as Chaotic Neutral Chickadee, and I pretty much just spam streams and <laughs> other random nonsense. Um, but anyways, I'm playing Raylona, and she is a barbarian, and I am super excited to kick some ass today. So, fingers crossed that happens. <laughs> now we'll take it around to Malik. Hey, I'm. Uh... Paul Malik Jajo. Uh, I'm playing Drumir Greyblade, uh, dwarf uh, wealth acquirer professional. Um, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Paul Jajo. It's terribly spelled, so I'll try to spell it. Uh, P A U L D as in David, Z as in zebra, I A D as in David, Z as in zebra, I O. It's not a great last name, but it's the one I have. If you're not following me on Twitter at, at Lantern Noir, you should, because sometime tonight I'll make sure you can find all of these people's Twitter accounts. So you can put the pencil down. We'll get you hooked up. <laughs> uh, as for what I'm most excited about for this character, um, playing a dwarf rogue is a fun idea because dwarves are like super traditional, super like straightforward. Um, and someone who is a criminal in dwarven society is like, Kind of a weird territory, so I thought it might be fun to play with. All right. Ari, it's over to you. Hi, I'm Ari, a.k.a. Akio Ari. Uh, I stream on Twitch a couple days a week playing all the games. Uh, what else do I do? <laughs> I am on Twitter, but I'm not on there too often. And um, what I'm most excited about tonight, well, I don't know what I'm doing at all, so I'm just excited to learn and be a part of the experience. <laughs> And last but absolutely not least, Arwen. Hi, I'm Arwen. Um, I'm not on the Twitter, but I am on Instagram. You can find me at uh, Chelsea of the Cross. Um, and I'm playing Chrysanthemum Coriolis. Uh, I've never played a, a cleric before or a halfling, so I'm branching out in all the ways. And I'm just excited to dive in there and start from scratch. So let me, uh, nope, that's not it. I was going to say, Streamlabs is drunk, and I'm trying to remember how to fix that. Ah, uh, oh, well. 
But I've updated my timer so that you will not get more stuff about our podcast. By the way, though, if you are curious about the Dungeons and or the Dragons, there is a weekly podcast on Tuesdays. We do it every other Tuesday called Happy Hour at the Old Timer Tavern. And there's a link to it. Nothing to do with tonight. Um, having done our round robin, uh, one more time, my name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir. I'm playing everybody else at the table. And um, I'm excited because I think this is a really fun adventure. We agreed it's going to happen in winter. So there's a good piles of snow up and down the streets. That beautiful white to be found only at the highest peaks of the tallest buildings because inside any urban setting, that snow is only white for about eighth of a second. And then it turns that neat sludgy gray or brown. So, eh. And there's, again, by picking winner, we have all kinds of fun encounters we're going to be engaging with, some neat NPCs, some fun stories. Um, and, of course, the things I've added to the campaign because I just like messing with things. And there's too many good opportunities. And so that's what we've got coming up tonight. Um, we don't have a previously on, so we're going to go ahead and run the opening credits and then set the opening scene. And a thank you to the amazing Kathleen L. She's on Twitch. Next week, I'll actually have a hot key ready to go to send you directly to her channel because um, it involves threes instead of E's, and I can't do it off the top of my head. Uh, but she provides that music, and she lets us steal it for all kinds of purposes. So as we've talked about in, in setting the stage for this week, the party has, has slowly coalesced into a collection of, of would-be adventurers who find themselves sitting around a table at the yawning portal, daring each other to some time set out on some manner of adventure. So far, most of those adventures have been limited to... not a lot. <laughs> Which, again, the yawning portal is known for people crazy enough to go down into the Undermountain. Most of your energy has been spent trading coins with others based on who's going to make it back and in what manner of shape. Um, on this particular evening, you actually, uh, it's been a while since the last group has been lowered down the chasm into the Undermountain. And the platform has remained lowered for this time. As you sit around your table, you have a chance to spot off to the side a lone half-orc nursing her drink. After a few moments, you also pick out a small crowd is forming around her of men wearing similar black cloaks. You quickly do a head count. And you'll notice that, that she is presently outnumbered four to one. We see what's going on over there or perhaps overhear them. Um, at first, it's hard to pick out the conversation. It's, you know, it seems to be some terse words from one of the, the men. He's completely bald with eye-shaped tattoos on the sides of his head. Um, but... After a few seconds, maybe a minute, um, it becomes much more clear that there is a disagreement as to who's at fault for members of their group currently being in the stockade. And the, the gentleman who, who has suffered hair loss um, seems to be the most animated in insisting that it is the half-orc's fault and that she owes them some recompense. Specifically, he demands that she covers their bar bill for the rest of the week. And she is insisting that if he doesn't back off, she's going to turn him into the bar. Well, Raylona definitely likes her. And she's all about um, going, 
going for that like underdog ish person not to say that she is the underdog but like she's got a bunch against her so i'm probably gonna go over there and ask what's wrong to the group i'm i want to know to the group specifically got a problem is anyone joining relona on this little as she puts her tanker down and walks past a couple of tables to get there I will oh. walk behind Rolona in like a, yeah, I'm right behind you, buddy, kind of way. <laughs> How far is it away? I love it. Three or four tables over. Um, I will get to a point where I might have a clear uh, line of dagger throw. I don't have, I don't have a bow yet. <laughs> the, see if I can get my, uh, in a, you know, in case something goes on tour. In case, I mean, uh, you know, you're the D and D veteran at the table. I'm just saying, with Dungeons and Dragons, anything can happen. I, Ari, what what, what were you saying? Shakira was doing. Well, Shakira is definitely gonna gonna post up alongside <laughs> alongside Rilona because again, she doesn't like to be left out of anything. Um, so she wants to see what's going on. She wants to be a part of the action. She's going to walk right up next to her alone and say, hey, Penny, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> That's logical. Um, as you uh, as as the three of you approach and um, Jeremy, you're kind of like pulls his cape up a little bit more tightly, pins it up, slinks off off to the side and everyone kind of forgets he was there, which is exactly as he intends. Uh, the half orc kind of looks over at the uh, the elves. I don't need your backup. These guys are going to leave. Uh, well, you might not mean need my backup, but I do like a good fight. So, see, so you, you hear <laughs> that? You can fight her and her friends. Let me enjoy my <laughs> ale. To which the the bald one goes, "Well, our fight's not with her. It's with you, you half breed." And then he tanks a tankard to the forehead. <laughs> I would love y'all to roll me some initiative for your first barroom brawl. Perfect. Woohoo. All right. Let's see. Let me throw up the, these guys onto the. Uh, you only put one. So throw them onto the tracker. And then start. Okay, and then I'll switch this into combat. Oh, that's right. I don't have any buttons because I haven't reset my stream deck. Starting out strong. I want to see some ch <laughs> There's always good stuff. Okay, so Chrysanthemum is at a 16. Oh. Dramir, 15. Relona, 4. <laughs> and Ari, do you see where your initiative is? <laughs> okay. Look in the middle of the in the on your page. Huh? Look right in the middle where it says proficiency plus two bonus. On the uh, D and D oh, beyond. On the D and D beyond. Okay. And right underneath that it says initiative. Oh. And then you click on that. There you go. Yay. See, we got it. Yay. Woo! Yay. And, and you have a perfectly average initiative, like <laughs> mathematically perfectly in the middle. I'm just yeah, impressed yeah. by the guy who took a tanker to the face. Uh, uh, you might not be so impressed if he falls over immediately after. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, then let's see. Do I have to ref... Oh, okay, so that's doing that. There it goes. Okay, and I had to refresh the initiative tracker so you can all see who's up and see who's where. Indeed, cue the Tortuga music. <laughs> Someone slammed, slammed the table through someone or someone through the table. Everything could work. Um, this guy, okay, so two of the thugs get their first actions, and they're going to make an effort to um, hit and restrain uh, the half-orc. Okay, so the first one does not. So she wiggles out of his grasp. 
And the second one is also going to attempt the same maneuver. And he is not going to be able to get his hands on her. So immediately, two of them are just trying to grab either side of her and lock her up so somebody can get some free shots in on her. For the most part, they're ignoring you three. Which allows the cleric a chance to do something interesting. Mm. Let's see. I have a grand total of two spell slots, so that's great. Well, you have cantrips. I do have cantrips. Which is a reminder to our other caster. Cantrips are your friends at low levels, because you can shoot as many as you want. (laughs) Yeah, let's see. And the DM will mention it might be a while before your next long rest. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, let's see. I'm not. I'm also. I'm also not super familiar with the the spell list. So I'm. I tried to familiarize myself with everything before we started, but I, <laughs> might take me a little while to get used to these. Um. I think I'm gonna cast Thaumaturgy. Oh. And I'm gonna holler, let her go at the ones that are grappling. You said, are there, there are two yeah. grappling? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna yell, let her go. Okay. Uh, that is definitely within the realm of Thaumaturgy. Three times as loud as normal for a minute. She, though she be wee, she packs a punch. Um, okay, then I'm going to need an intimidation check. Okay. How do I do checks on... Uh, you just beyond. click on the little plus two where it says just intimidation. Just two. hit that plus oh, okay. two. It'll automatically do it. Um, fun fact, if you right click on the box, you'll get the option to do... Holy shnikes! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a punch indeed. <laughs> it's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> you know, you know, she just, be, but little she is fierce. Just just for giggles. Roll it again. Okay. Just just for giggles. Hold. <laughs> She's <Okay>. serious. <laughs> everyone everyone make note of this. Bark make- is definitely worse than my bite at this point. <laughs> Because we all start that, rolling no. nothing but twos and threes. We know who to blame. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, yes, the halfling steps out from behind the barbarian, points at the guys, and just, like, tankards vibrate on tables. Um, you actually hear a crash from the kitchen area. And if anybody wasn't paying attention to the brawl, they are now. Oh, yeah. We got an audience. <laughs> um, I'm actually also going to take both of those guys and remove them from the combat. As one wets himself, the other soils himself, and both are leaving. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Oh, next round's on me. Because <laughs> that was kind of... Yeah. Okay. Nobody saw that coming. I mean, how perfect for a cleric of the luck goddess to roll (laughs) incredibly well right off the bat. Wow. I'm so excited right now. So good. Uh, Yagra's not entirely sure what to do with this. So she's going to settle for just punching the ball guy in front of her. Hmm. And he takes it and rolls back. Um, she she throws a, a one two, and the, the 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 first one hits him square in the jaw. The second kind of glances off his ribs, um, but he definitely looks like he's you know his nose is already bloodied, and he's looking like he might be making for the exit in a moment. Our uh, our dwarf has slipped off to the side. What's he doing? So- you said there's how many of them left? Uh, there's two plus the bald guy. Right. Um, I am going to uh, try to sneak up behind one of the 
uh, two remaining gentlemen uh, with my uh, short sword out um, and uh, put it to their back and say, I would leave if I were you. All right. See if I can't get a sneak up on Uh Yeah, go ahead and roll me that sneak then. Okay. You got to get your cursor off of it before you hit spacebar to unmute. Because you just That's, rolled twice. Yep, there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Passive perception. Uh, they're not proficient in it. Bam. Eh, all right. So that hits the table. Um, you sneak up, you sneak up, you give your short sword at his back, and he turns around and looks at you as he pulls his own short sword out. Fair enough. Shall we? So number two has squared off with Drumir. Uh, the bald one is bleeding out his nose. The third one is still kind of like weighing her options. Like, she kind of wants to get out of Dodge, but she doesn't want to leave, leave everybody behind because, you know, teams and camaraderie and blood oath. And there was that whole thing about sleeping in the haunted house for a night. It's hard to walk away from that. Um, which sets the stage for what our wizard does. I already talked about, tell me about Shakira and what she's thinking. She's thinking she wants to go for the weakest one first. <laughs> the one bleeding out the nose? Yes, the one bleeding out the nose, just to put some more fear into the person. Um, I'm not sure what to select. Do I need to do like an action or? In a general turn, you get an, you can have all the free actions you want. Okay. You can take one normal action and you can also make a move, which in that, since we're kind of theater of the mind right now, the move isn't the most important part. So all of your spells are one action to cast. So that would be kind of like your big thing for the for your turn is to cast a spell if you want to, or make an attack with your uh, rapier. I'm gonna say um, she's going to take make an attack with her rapier. Okay, keep the magic on the DL for a second. For now. Fair enough. Then you would just have to roll that little box that says hit DC where it says plus two. Let's see how you do. Where is that one at? <laughs> oh, if you look where it says actions on your character sheet. Oh, the so D uh, okay. The plus under two. initiative, and then you keep going and you see attack, and then you'll see rapier. And then you can just head over there to that. And the 14 is good enough to hit. So click the box next to that, and we'll see how much damage you did. Bing, bing. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Well, then. So the ball guy rolls back. He's nursing his nose, and he just has time to look up and watch as Shakira raises her blade in front of her, points it at him, and then lunges twice. He do fails to dodge either of the lunges. And as she pulls her rapier back, he drops to the ground next to his friends. So ball guy's out. Uh, let's see. We've got these two. Uh, this one's sparring with Dremir, so let's see how they do. Uh, yoink. Ooh. Dremir is going to be on the losing side of that fence uh, and taking three damage. Um, meanwhile, the other one is going to use her action to pick up the ball guy and start to drag him towards the door. Krenz has no action. So what's the barbarian doing in this moment? So we're down to just one. One is currently fencing with uh, Dramir and winning. What is dragging the ball guy towards the door? All right. Um, I'm going to throw just a punch, an unarmed strike, over at the guy fighting with Tremere. <laughs> so. Fair enough. Let's see. 
<laughs> we're not, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, just That's threatening okay. him, really. Just, just so yeah. he knows I'm there. Exactly. You know, you're, you're making your presence known. That's not a bad thing. And Polly, good to have you here. Saw you sneak in there. Yes, and do not mess with wizards. And Cheapskate, good morning, I think. Check my Twitter if you aren't. Somebody is looking to build a game on GMT time. I just retweeted her. That's your time, I think. Or close to it. Um, that takes us around the top of the initiative round, but things are about to get a lot more interesting. As you... Um, as this little 15, 20 seconds goes by, you start to hear this rumble from the portal itself. And anyone who's not actively trying to defend themselves, which would be Chrysanthemum and Shakira, um, can glance over and see a massive green hand land on the edge of the portal itself, followed by a second, and a massive green body pull itself out of the portal the fight is almost broken up with a shout nearly as loud as chrysanthemums of troll as a lumbering brute pulls itself up out of the portal i'm gonna add them to the combat tracker now Whoa. yeah <laughs> little harry potter vibe there <laughs> Not gonna lie. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bink. There we go. As it lumbers out, you notice a large series of massive bat like creatures swarming around it that are now spreading out throughout the bar. How, how big are the creatures? Um they're like um they're bat like shaped but they're about the size of say a doberman Yikes. with long snouts so with that being the case let's see we'll get around and we'll let chrysanthemum have her action okay um Let's see. These things are just coming out, or are they like working? Like, are, are they like within reach of me? Like, could I hit one yet? Or do you want to hit one? I'm unsure if I want to hit one or if I want to try and hit the guy engaging Drumir so we have more hands. <laughs> um, Drumir, Drumir still is engaged with one, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would like to make an attack with my mace against the one engaging Drumir and yell, cut it out. We have bigger problems. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead and roll me that intimidation check first. Okay. Since you st thaumaturgy runs for a minute. Ooh. Okay. Um, so that was not that intimidating, but now you can roll your attack. Not so much. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. And then do I hit the I hit the to um the plus one to hit mm -hmm. to roll? So, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah. That's okay. I didn't really want to hurt him. I just wanted to be like, hey, cut hey guys, hey, hey. <laughs> Knock it out. It wasn't out. a serious attack. <laughs> it was like a glancing, <laughs> cut it out. Fair enough. Fair enough. The half orc watches as you're kind of dealing with the thugs, sees the troll and goes, finally, something worth fighting. Pulls out um, a massive curved blade, lets out a blood curling scream and charges towards it. As one does. Uh, bum, bum, bum. And... Bum, bum. Okay. There we go. That's what she's up to. 
Um. Oh, hey, Reckless. Glad to see you're here. And um, not only it your first time trying on our stream, this is also Sharkira's absolute first Dungeons & Dragons game ever. So. She's doing beautifully. She is doing oh, epic. She's already killed somebody. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Um, so one of those big, massive things is going to swoop down uh, initially um, on Yagra as she ran over there to see what it can do, because that's what it does. Um, and she swats it away with the back of her hand uh, and sends it flying in a different direction. How is our dwarven rogue holding up? Uh, doing all right. Um, he's going to take advantage of the uh, confusion and take a stab at the uh, brute what done him just a moment ago. <laughs> Who is now actively engaged with two other party members, allowing you to get sneak attack damage if you connect. A change from earlier editions. Yeah, it's uh, it's no longer a bit of calculus to try and figure out if you've gotten sneak attack or not. It's so much uh, let's see. 13 will connect, so throw all of your damage down and see how dead this guy is. <sighs> Stinking rogues. Oh. Not that dead. Uh, as I stick him, I say something to the effect of, I was trying to be generous. <laughs> okay so meanwhile this other bat like creature is going to swoop in and it's going to take a, a pass at um uh relona let's see if it can care um okay relona has just so, enough time uh, to go ahead I roll the daggers damage instead of a short sword Ooh. We will update that. With... Sorry, rolled again. Sorry. The, it was slightly less damage, actually. We'll, we'll take the dagger damage and call it good. One of those bat-like creature thingies um, swoops down and actually lands on Rolona's back. And she feels this sharp pain as it latches into her, like, into her flesh with its long beak. And starts to suck blood out. And in that like instant, you actually start to feel a little bit woozy. As you're not used to that much blood being lost at a time. Air. <laughs> the really bad news is it's going to do seven damage while doing all of that. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, half. That hurts. <laughs> Ouch. Kind of. The troll will rampage. These guys are going to ch chase after other people in the tavern. I'd love to know what uh, Sharkira is doing. Well, how close is Sharkira to Rolona? Uh, at arm's length. At arm's length, okay. Um, hmm. Let's see, and the troll is going on a rampage. How far is Sharkira from the troll? Uh, about three tables. About three tables. Now, the good news mm -hmm. is, as you glance around, because this is a good chance to take some stock. I can see that's what Shakira's thinking. Um, this is a tavern full of adventurers. People are drawing swords. Yeah. Hmm. But so far, the troll hasn't noticed you guys. Hmm. Well. You are free to change that, of course. I am absolutely going to change it because I, I like chaos. Sharkira loves chaos and she wants more of it in her life. So I, I, I see, think see the gears she is going to aim. If, if is it possible, may I attack again? Is that allowed? You get an attack every turn. Woo! Okay. Uh, I believe she is going to shoot a nasty firebolt at the troll. Try to get his attention. Go okay. Box. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that plus four and see how we do. 13, 13, 13. Trolls are kind of tough. 
Um, okay, so the firebolt connects, but it kind of like just splats across its like shoulder where you can see it's got this weird thickened skin and it appears to have no appreciable damage against it. It was a good shot. It does turn at you. And there is that moment where you, Chrysanthemum, and Relona can, can acknowledge you have pissed it off a little bit. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, number two is currently fighting with um, uh, Dramir, and he's thinking... Nah, he's done. He's going to disengage and head for the door as well. As does three, who is currently carrying out the one who's unconscious. Uh, this one is going to go after... Eh, not one of you guys. What is Rolona doing in this moment? Okay. Well, she's probably try grasping at her back where something is clinging on to her. Okay. Um, and can I make a check to pull it off me? Sure. Give me an unarmed strike. Sure. That's been plenty to hit. Yeah, you can reach <laughs> back, grab that thing pull it loose and slam it into a table. Awesome. Um, I would love, let's see, is it possible for you not to kill it outright? No, it is impossible for you not to kill it outright. <laughs> yeah. Four damage will definitely crush it. All right. Um, and the good news is you have a chance to get all of your blood back. Awesome. If you can absorb it through your skin. Oh, <laughs> 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 Always that disclaimer. I just, yeah, no. A small print. Yeah, I mean it's 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 like a like a a well engorged tick that you have just crushed. So. Uh, all right, is that it for my turn, or can I make another action? That's it. But the good news is you killed one of them. Okay. Good news then. And it's it's out of the mix. Right. Um, the bad news is there's two more. Um, one's going after someone else in the bar. One's going to come swooping down after Sharkira. And I think she's safe for now. She's not safe. Mm. And she's going to take five damage as it latches onto her. So Sharkira has one stuck on her. The last one is going to take a, its pass at uh, somebody else in the bar. What's our cleric doing? Uh, okay, so since the since the room is starting to like get pretty crowded, I'm guessing. Um, can I? I'm small. Can I climb like like up on a table? Mm -hmm. Can I like climb like onto a chair and then up onto a table? Um, I'm gonna hold my mace in one hand, kind of like a baseball bat, but. I would like to cast Toll the Dead on the one that's attached onto Sharkira. Okay. That's totally that doable. Okay. Um, and I think with Cleric Cantrips, it's a straight up, they just get their saves. Um, yeah, it's just a straight wisdom save for them with a target 12. Okay. And they're not the brightest things. <laughs> so go ahead and roll your damage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It um it shakes for a moment and you can see its black eyes turn bright white and then it just sort of like falls off of Sharkira and sort of twitches a couple of times on the ground. You have no idea what the sound of the dead sounds like to a sturge, but whatever that sound <laughs> is, it just heard it really loudly. Yeah, it did. And then I'm going to like clamp up on my mace like a like a baseball bat. That'll work. Yagra is continuing her fight against the troll with the rest of the tavern. Uh, da, 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 and doing some damage to it. So we'll get those all out of there. Um, what's Dramir doing? Um, I'm going to see if there is a nearby table that I can upend and use as cover. 
uh, assuming they're not bolted to the floor at this point. Oh, you can totally up in the table. Groovy. I do so. Um, I'm going to see if there's a... So there's no Sturges next to uh, any of my allies? Not at the moment. Okay. Um, one of the other Sturges that attacked the other... Uh, other... Hang on, hang on. Go. I'm, 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 I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. Hang on. I would love for you to roll me a quick perception check. Or There's a 5% chance of something really interesting happening. Okay. You can finish. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, so I uh, pick one, I take aim, at, I pull out my short bow, and I okay. take, uh, it's especially short because I'm a dwarf. Um, I take aim at one of these Sturges that is otherwise haranguing a uh, uh, tavern goer and take a shot. Okay. That's totally doable. You can see one's actually swooping down on one of the barmaids. And she's currently, like, batting at it with her tray. And that would have been really impressive. Keep, keep pressing the thing. Yeah, if you had thanks. hit it. I said, hold still! <laughs> um, otherwise, I'm going to just hope nothing saw me and continue <laughs> to be behind the thing. Fair enough. Um, okay, so that one's going to do that, and it's going to do that. The other thing, it's doing its thing. This one's going to come down and go after, uh, oh, hey, it's going to come flying in at um, Chrysanthemum, because she's, like, right there, and latch onto her arm, and suck That's out fair. seven points worth of blood. Oh, What's Sharkira doing? Wanting to run away in terror. Um, how is how is the troll doing? The troll is still trolling. Still trolling. Okay. Yeah, I found some new memes that are really just like owning the libs. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll only do that once tonight. No, oh, they're like puns. You got to keep doing them, even if we cringe at it. I like it. That was uh, the harder the cringe, the better the pun, the, right? The best part about becoming a true graybeard is that that is expected. Um, <laughs> I redeem. I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Encore. Okay. Um, I'm going to save that for after the fight because my dad jokes are long. Um, <laughs> and, and you, you get you get your money's worth out of a dad joke here. We'll save that for after the fight, and we get to a breather. Um. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, the troll's still doing the thing. It's just kind of like, you know, pounding through. Um, you also have noticed that people are throwing lan lanterns at it or lamps. So they're grabbing the lights off and smashing them up against the troll. Okay. Which um, pro has most of you kind of confused as to why. You still have uh, one, two, three, four, five of those bat-like mosquito things swarming about. Okay. Wonderful. Um, are there any very close by me? Uh, one is currently attempting to exsanguinate Chrysanthemum. Okay. All right. Well, I would like to run to her aid if I am close enough to that. And I think I'm just going to punch it. Because Shark here's fed up and she's throwing punches now. <laughs> fair. While fair, from a tactical point, uh, point of view, <laughs> you are about as strong as Bounty pa 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 uh, Paper Towel. Not the weakest. <laughs> but. I'd say wet toilet paper, but no, you're stronger than toilet paper. <laughs> but. The rapier will probably have a little more kick to it. Okay. From a tactical point of view. I'm the toilet paper in the group. Tell you what. <laughs> bash it with the basket hilt on the rapier. How's that? We'll split the difference. Say that one more time. If you bash it with the hilt of the rapier. I like that. That There you go. Go ahead and give it a, uh, give us the attack roll. Uh, 
Uh, okay, good news. It is no longer trying to exsanguinate your friend. <laughs> the bad news is it, it got away. But you did scare it off. You did scare it off. So it has that going for it. Um, and hopefully none of you get hit again because I don't think any of you can take it. Uh, number two is going to take a pass at Sharkira and just fly right over her. These guys have all left the building. Get them off the board. And let's see where that leaves us. Oh, well, that one's going to attempt to eat Rolona. And not succeed. And now it's her yes. action. Okay, so it attempted to eat me, so I'm assuming it's pretty close. Yeah. It just uh, I, came down and, and you st sidestepped. Can I grab and smash that thing? Absolutely. All right. I... <laughs> That's a grab and smash. And it is no longer with us. Uh, there we go. Get that off the board. Uh, okay, so I see one, two, three, four. We got most of them are, you've almost purged them. As you smash it down to the table and watch, it's, it's kind of like next to the last one you just smashed. <laughs> you have a stack of these. <laughs> Another. Uh, <laughs> okay, so those, those are going after Yagra, and this one's going after Drumir. Well, nope, because he's ducked down. So, you know what? I don't care. It still is. On the other side of... They're doing a lot of damage. So, this one, like, swoops in from the other side of the table that Dramir is looking out over and catches him off guard. Um, it's going to do five points of damage and latch on. So that's, yeah, that's what that one's doing. Chrysanthemum's up. All right. I'm going to, can I, do I have line of sight on the one that is? Absolutely. Um, on Dreamer? Okay. Yeah, then I'm going to jump to another table. Okay. Uh, well, heck, let's do that. I'll jump to another table and I'll cast. I'm gonna cast Toll the Dead on that one. Okay. Give me damage. That's enough to kill it. Yay. They little. They small. I toss it off me. <sighs> It shakes as it hears whatever sound they make when they die, and it dies. Which takes us to Dramir. How is our dwarf doing? Uh, could be better. Uh, don't... Mute it again. Right. Uh, he's, not, he's doing... He could be better. Uh, not much to do about that now. So uh, he is going to ready an action to... Uh, shoot at a Sturge if it comes into adjacency to him or his allies. Even though that would kind of suck to do it right next to him. But, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. I respect I'm, I'm, that. I'm hoping to get the sneak attack, trying to save some uh, somebody some hit points. I see what you're thinking. I see what you're thinking. Alright. Well, let's let one happen. This one's gonna come swooping in on Rolona. It will connect but that will trigger your action once it gets in proximity so take that shot all right <laughs> okay so that was your sharp i'm interpreting the the game log right that was a 20 to hit um, that's correct for for Drumir. So Rolona has time to look up, see it coming at her, pull back her fist, and just punches it right square in the, the, the beak just as the arrow connects and blasts it out from the side in front of you. So it is very dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the troll you will continue a, uh, to troll. and search for another target. Yep. 
Um, this one's going to do somebody else in the bar. That one's doing somebody else in the bar. What is Shakira doing? And welcome, KLG Scissor. Glad to have you at our table. Shakira, she still wants that troll. She can't She can't handle that she's not currently fighting the troll. So <laughs> I believe that she is. She doesn't know why, but she wants to join in with the club and, and um, hit it with lanterns as well. I'm not sure how I would do that. Can I do that? Sure. Uh, just give me a... It's an improvised weapon, which for you is not going to be that different. Then you can roll your firebolt attack roll. So just hit that plus four because that has your proficiency bonus worked into it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you grab a lantern and chuck it at it, and it sails over the troll's shoulder and down into the yawning portal. The good news is you never hear it hit the bottom. <laughs> Both from a combination of the noise in the tavern and the depth of the hole. Rowena still technically has an action. Uh, is there anything left? I don't... There's three of the Sturges flying around still. Uh, is any within, like, grabbing range? Sure. Okay, we'll try to smash another, just if, for fun, then. If you make a hustle. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's toast. I just be piling these up in the same spot too. It's like a jump, jump <laughs> off the table, grab it, pull it down, smash it into the table. <laughs> that works. I keep things organized. <laughs> Put them in a nice, neat pile. Speaking of nice, neat piles, how's our cleric doing? I'm doing okay. Um, our are, are there any Sturges currently bothering anybody, any one of us? Or At the they moment, just no. Loose? There's two left, and they're kind of like circling, looking for a target. Okay. Um, I'm going to climb down off the table um, and cast Toll the Dead on the closest one that I have sight on. Okay. Okay, roll damage on that guy. Nope, they don't got a lot of hit points, so that one's toast. That's okay, neither do I. <laughs> no, you don't. All right, Dramir's gonna be the Dramir's gonna be the last one to go. All right. Uh you said there was one Sturge left? Yep. Uh I'm Sturge just gonna take a shot four. at Remains as the last of them. <sighs> That's much more like that's a hit, and that's going to knock it out. Uh, I resume my uh, cover behind the upended table. <laughs> Which the troll works. hasn't seen me. As, as the arrow takes the last Sturge, and you watch as the, the body kind of disappears back down the portal as well, um, you, you have a chance to glance up, the upper balcony is looking down. There's a balcony above the main floor so that you, there are more tables that can look down at the portal and watch people descend. And then you glance up there and you see a, a gentleman in, in black robes with all kinds of arcane symbols who shouts, And now! And along the railing, a half a dozen spellcasters launch fire attacks. You see beams of flames. You see a large blossom of flame. You see individual firebolts in rapid succession, and they all impact the troll in near simultaneous times. All of that oil that has been splashed on it immediately ignites. And the troll lets out a howl that actually makes Chrysanthemum slightly impressed because it out outdid her for volume. Oh, dang. Yagra and the other melee fighters push in. And just start hacking away. And eventually the troll is pushed back until a final blow lands and it tumbles back down the portal. Again, you don't really hear it hit the bottom. 
a mix of distance and the, the loud cheer from throughout the tavern as everyone kind of stops and breathes. Everything gets really quiet. I'm going to give Drew Mir a low five. <laughs> Get everybody with finger guns. Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly reasonable. Um, Dernan, who is one of the owners, uh, s- starts to walk back from where he was fighting next to Yagra, picks up the scabbard for his two-handed sword and slides it in. Tucks under his arm as he walks around the bar. Well, must be Tuesday. That's a mood. Is there a sign that says you know, X days since something has <laughs> crawled out? As one of the uh, a, an acolyte of one of the nearby temples kneels down next to you to tend your wounds, looks at you and, and comments, they used to have one of those. It was on zero so often, it, they thought it best to just discontinue the practice. <laughs> Why bother? Somewhat, yes. Oh, hey, Shadow. Glad to have you here. Um, as you were given a chance to, as things are being set right, the upended table is, is reset. Um, anyone with healing magic is happy to assist those who partook in the defense of the portal. So you will be fully healed without having to do anything of great consequence. Yay. Um. They are, they are happy for the assistance uh, that y'all provided. Let me add on my healing button because I new computer. Nothing's where it's supposed to be. Uh, let's see. Because there is a, a rest button I have. And it would be really nice if I could find it again so I could just move on and I wasn't staring at this list. Ah, there it is. Bing. There. That's fixed. And you all have a chance to breathe. (sighs) I point to the rest of them. Morale. Yeah, Raylona's going to get on that real quick. (laughs) I got it. I'm going to go to the bar and get four ales. Before you even have a chance to get up to go get those ales, a gentleman in a doublet with a full collar, big poofy hat with this ostrich feather that just, I mean, it's its at least half of his own height, is there, and he's got both hands full, three tankards on one and two on the other, and he drops them down in front of you. Ah, well, that saves that. <laughs> An Thank absolutely you. epic performance from you four newbies. It is as though you have adventured through the Undermountain yourselves far more than your years would suggest. Chrysanthemum bows. Raylana can't stop staring at the feather on his hat. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think I, Shark I, reaches out and touches it just <laughs> while he's not looking. <laughs> he he is actually okay. He knows, oh, yes, yes, this. I I acquire this from the most interested of gentlemen. Over in Baldur's Gate of all places. I was doing a I was performing, would you believe, which I don't often do. I'm more of a historian. A collector of the stories, not one to tell them. Very fascinating gentleman, though. Something of a bard, then. Oh, oh! I wouldn't dare to th- call myself such. I have neither the talent nor the ability to to hold an audience for an extended period of time. But, but perhaps some of my stories may have made their way into bardic circles to be repeated, perhaps embellished upon sometimes with their own twists, which make them completely inaccurate. But you, you know how it can go in the world of such stories. And uh, we're in Waterdeep, which is further north, right? Yes. So, uh, Baldur's Gate, what, uh, what brings you up here? Well, I travel, studies, research, 
collecting tales, admiring ways in which a troll might be dispatched. As, as you could see, the tavern would have done fairly well, would it not for that band of sturges that rode up with it, that you, amazing adventurers you are, handled so quickly and with such carefree nature, the, the sheer alacrity, it was just, it was a sight to behold. Yeah, those things really sucked. <laughs> Umir stifles the laugh. He's like, yes, yes. And I, and I do. And he pulls the feather down and sets it on the table for you to look at. Now, the gentleman that I got this from, would you believe, had, had the, one of the most interesting challenges. See, he also ran a tavern like this. Um, and he had noticed that a particular mouse had moved into the kitchen. Specifically, it was sleeping he discovered one morning in his favorite mug for coffee. And being a, being a man who was of kind soul, he took the mouse and set it outside the tavern so it might go its way. And would you believe the next morning, there was the mouse sleeping in his cup. It's been so a comfy cup. He took the mouse out and thought it will go away. And he, he actually carried it into the central market to release. Would you believe the mouse was back the next morning? And at this I point... His wife had had quite enough of him going out to, to release the mouse and insisted he make it a bed. So he put a pile of cotton in a little corner of the cupboard. The next morning, that mouse had pulled the cotton into his favorite coffee mug. <laughs> I like this mouse. <laughs> Aww. And after a bit, it became part of his morning routine, you see where he would, he would get up and find the mouse in his cup, and he would have a happy smile that this kind mouse had found its way there and was sleeping so soundly, would gently scoop it up and set it off to the side, wipe out the mug, have his morning coffee, and get the tavern running. And I said, sir, it sounds as though this was... Surely you could have hired kind of a cat. You could have maybe hired someone to track down how the mouse was getting in. He's like, well, you know, I, I rather enjoyed finding that little mouse every morning. He was such a simple creature. And so content to be in my mug. And it wasn't that much trouble to move him. And it got to be where I kind of rather liked finding him in the morning. I said, oh, well, did you, did you ever think perhaps to name it? He said, I did. I named that dear little mouse Folgers. Because I found myself thinking every morning that the best part of waking up was finding Folgers in my cup. <laughs> and that checks off our dad joke. Nicely done. Yes. Uh, nicely done. Got him. Oh, <laughs> my, my dad <laughs> jokes run long. <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you. That was that was epic. But enough about mice and feathers. I am looking for a band of adventurers for a particular job. And I think you four might be able to help me. Band of adventurers you have found. Yes. It's the I, job. Well, I, I perhaps I should have opened with this. My name is Volothamp Gedarm. You may have uh, heard of my books. Luna just gonna kind of awkwardly like itch her arm and like not pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Volo's Guide to Monsters. Perhaps you've seen it about. Oh. A comprehensive oh. collection of information on destroying all sort of nasty beasties. Oh, well, <clears throat> yes. it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Drumir Greyblade. Oh. He, uh, he offers a hand. Shakes, his hand, shakes your hand happily. And you would be, and he turns to, to, to Sharkira. Go, mute it again. <laughs> Sharkira says stoically, please to make your acquaintance. And just kind of looks at him, doesn't offer her hand. She just kind of looks at him up and down. She still wants the feather, but she's what? not sure about this dude yet. He turns to the halfling and puts his hand out. And you would be? Chrysanthemum Coriolis. And I don't read much, but good for you. And she shakes his hand in a very, like, she's happy to have made a new friend. And it's it's that kind of handshake that's just a little bit too enthusiastic. But she doesn't care. 
She's just like, she's got, you know, some ale in her and she's like, whoa, new friend. <laughs> it he seems nice. Completely unfazed by that. Um, and then turns to the barbarian and has his hand like right there. She's and, going to, oh, go ahead. <laughs> nope, and you? Uh, she's going to take a, one of the ale glasses and just kind of slam it into her hand, his hand and then take her other hand and kind of clap him on the shoulder. Raylona, nice to meet you. Yes, yes. Good to meet you as well. Now, if we could, let's, let's move out of the center here. This, there are ears. I, there's a table over there for us. And he scoops up his tankard and heads over to a table in the far corner of the yawning portal. I give him a follow. Chrysanthemum follows. As does Sharkula. Well, everybody else is going, so I guess, <laughs> I guess I'll go too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So here's here is the situation. I, I have a friend whose name is... Now follow, like, and subscribe. Um, sorry. I have a friend who his name is Floon Blagmar. Um, nice fellow. I consider him a competition when it comes to being a handsome gentleman. Um, but not much of one when it comes to the brains, I'm sorry to say. Um, and I'll just be quite honest, I'm a little bit concerned. We parted ways a couple of nights ago, and I haven't heard of him since. I'm starting to wonder if perhaps something befell him, or worse, kidnapped him. So, um, given the prowess you have displayed this evening, I would like to hire you to, uh, to find him, to con confirm that he's all right, uninjured, if you will, or at least not dead. Given that he c likely could trip over anything at any time, uninjured is unlikely, let's be honest. But uh, at least know that he's not fallen in a bad way. Would you think this task is something that you would be willing to take on this evening? Uh, looking to the rest of the group, I give a kind of like, I think it's so. Like something we could handle? You had me at the word hired. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, about that. And he kind of shuffles through his uh, pockets. I, uh, I, I, I have at the moment but 40 gold for you. But I can guarantee 10 times that. Once we have confirmed that uh, Floon is well, safe, and returned to his home. Seems fair to me. That'd be fantastic. Uh, what does he look like? Where did you see him? Last? Well, we were, uh, we were engaging in uh, a bit of merriment uh, down at the, the Skewered Dragon. It's a, a bit of a... Well... I won't say it's it's a rougher place than this, um, but um, I might say that it's a rougher place than this. It the excitement tends to be more of the alcoholically induced type than the uh, supernaturally induced. Uh, most of the spirits you find there are in the bottle, which then make its way into the people, which then make its way into a bit of a well, it can be a lively place. Uh, Floon himself, uh, well, a little bit less handsome than my, my own countenance, um, early 30s, uh, red hair, wavy. Um, he was uh, he was very well dressed, uh, probably more than he should have been for where we were meeting. Um, to be quite frank, he rather stood out, which, as I mentioned, not always the not always the brightest spell in the book. Uh, human? Yes. Uh Drumir is uh, scratching this on a piece of paper. I, I well, terribly regret not offering to walk him home, but to be quite frank, he had, uh, he had been a little more lucky in Dragon Monty than I had hoped he would be, and I, I was a little bit perturbed at the amount of gold of mine he was going home with. I so regret there. thinking Fair ill enough. of him. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm sure he's fine. We'll uh we'll track him down for you and uh said return him to his home. 
Yes, or we could meet here, to, and I could certainly once he's back among those of skill, he can. We will be fine. Sounds gonna, like a deal. I'm going to turn to. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to turn to Chrysanth's mom and be like, well, we can mark that bar off our list. <laughs> Chrysanthemum like downs the, the rest of her ale and plops her tankard down. And she's got like a little foam mustache. <laughs> Let's go. Ari, was Shakira going to do something? Oh, no. She just says, I'm in. Bring it. Let's do this. She's finished all of her ale, so she's she's ready. That's reasonable. Uh, sounds great. Uh, so I guess grab some directions to the bar and start there. It's not hard to get directions to the uh, skewer dragon. A couple of the the uh, the bar keeps have heard of it. Um, Volo offers you some directions, but they're a bit roundabout. Um, it's not exactly the most direct route at first because it involves going to Hightown first because that's how he usually gets there. Right. Um, and he seems a little bit distracted by the, such things. Oh, hey, Cheesecake. I was say, maybe, maybe he was trying to get us to avoid the worst parts of that area, but no, eh, he just probably fine. Yeah, his directions are to get to the gate of Hightown and then from Hightown back down to the docks ward. Um, which, yeah, he's trying. Um, and with that, you can set out and find your way along um, towards the dock wards themselves among the rougher parts of the metropolis of Waterdeep. Which seems and feels like a natural place to take a short three minute rehydration stretch um we're gonna be back in a couple of minutes i'm gonna go ahead and put up some clips from the channel for you all to enjoy while you're chilling out and we'll see you back here once we're rehydrated rested and ready to resume or about three minutes give or take yeah sounds good and you'd be all sitting around also you hear this bear roar in the distance and a fwa bang and this old hunter in like night, you know, late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds clothes would come out with a lantern, look at everybody, and then take off down the trail. Well, if you follow him, he leads you to this bonfire, where he nice. the first thing out of his mouth is, "I don't know what's up, all you city slickers. I wouldn't be following no strange guy with a gun out <laughs> to a bonfire, but since you're here, <laughs> and over the course of the evening, spirits from the the history of the park land come yeah. and talk to you about how they got what their lives were like before they died nice. which was oh hey floofy which was really Ooh. neat they had a native american girl who was part of the um the neutrals who can having taken a, a holy order of some kind and other oaths i'm thinking like an elven like really Kung Fu Elfin Monk? Kung Fu Elfin Monk. Okay. Yes. That meditates a lot. I can I can yeah. I can live with that. Because elves don't have to sleep as much, so it's totally right. Oh no, that whole love interest thing. That's right. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I almost killed him. I... I feel like we should not be meddling anyway. If there's someone killing someone else, it might be for good reason. You don't know. Oh my. <laughs> that got dark. Wow. We have killed lots of people for various and sometimes no good reason. Yeah, she's not wrong. <laughs> oh, good Lord, we're murdering I don't want to judge, okay? Uh, uh, am I to conclude great. the party is going to enter into the house? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm heading that way. I'll tag oh, her. Oh, she already has the potion. She already has the potion. No, she just handed you the book. And as soon as your hands touched it, she let go and run. She's not going to take the potion? It's got bigger fish to fry, like gain her ass out of there. <laughs> you shot her. I'm trying to unshoot her <laughs> to the best of my abilities. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Punch the... No, I don't know. That's a bad idea. There... 
is so much nope <laughs> surrounding this trap. I am not here for an amulet. I am here for a traumatized rogue. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's two. <laughs> Well, I wasn't really concerned about the amulet. I just thought that there's a way to check if you really want to know. I'm intrigued. Cut um, your hand. Bleed in front of her. Got it. I mean, but but <laughs> if she's <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I'd do it. Ah, I'd so did it. Smell it. But like. <laughs> She could not necessarily so be a vampire. Right well, she you're saying like, she's a she is a vampire, so <laughs> or she's like possessed by one, or like <laughs> cutting her hand open, or like the, in the leader of Strahd's domain. Wait, her Sounds hand not, or my not hand? Hers, I just cut not my hers. hand open. Not hers. That's like a fantastic James. idea. Oh, I didn't have to cut my hand open. We need to cut her hand open. Oh. No, no. Come here, girl. Come on. No, no you I'm mean already to say... bleeding. <laughs> James just like waving his bloody hand in like, Irina's come on. face. Go ahead and roll me um, a performance check. Maybe the dice are going to favor you at the moment. Also, are can't we be an can intimidation? We... I can't like intimidate the rhyme no. with my music. Okay. No. Well, can, can I thought I would try. an intimidation music. Or though. I, I can't persuade. Yeah. I can't persuade no. them to not sing with my music. Okay. What's up, uh, Molly? Do. Can we do anything when we're singing, or is that like it takes up our whole action? Oh, it it, it doesn't. Come on. It doesn't. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yeah, finally. I'm, I'm over here trying. I finally can bard. <laughs> so just, just yeah. Let me bard. I never get to bard. <laughs> I'm always doing failing rolls when it comes to bard skills. The bard is being tired. Barding when it's most can I important. Say <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about time. MVP. Sweden is my lucky country. No All right. kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Safe, yes. So we assume this guy is bad. Oh, he's super bad. Well, you know. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Good. I mean, he keeps I on trying have... to. He's a dick. He keeps on trying to coerce Irina into coming up to his castle and fucking die, become a vampire lady, <laughs> and she's not into it. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, okay. Got herself, just stole a ship. <laughs> Holy God. There's a reason they call her the upstart. Oh my God. <laughs> Can't even believe that worked. Gentlemen, I am your new captain. Yes. <laughs> 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 Go, why am I I legit this? have been screaming this entire time. So you know what? What is the health of everybody right now? You're also right full now? health. You want to like come right. back and Everyone's the full health. Like, no, we're not. The rest all of right. us are like highly injured. You're on yeah, the we're all hurting yeah. pretty wanna, like, bad. The jam board bit? says that everybody's... Oh. Oh, refresh. Refresh <laughs> Never mind. <that>. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. Ember's alive because I just healed for 12. <laughs> Show is at 12 out of 41. You, you were, were like really seeing around full on the outside of the this circle entire like, time. Come join me. I'm full health. Yo. Show is in it out of spot here. the jam for the thing. And I was just like, oh, the oh no. Oh, I think we broke the. You're pretty brave. Now you can hear. <laughs> okay. So before we go to bed, Kaylee wants to say goodnight to everybody. So Kaylee K says goodnight. And goodnight. who else is saying goodnight? Goodnight. Aww. Yep, that's Ezri. So cute. What a cutie. She's squirmy. So good night. I love you. Love you too. All right, there you go. Because, yes, our cats are named Julian, Miles, Keiko, and Ezri. Aww. Nice. And no, Dad did not spend 60 bucks to have the actress Nicole DeBoer send us a note welcoming Esri Dax to the house. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was well spent. 
the best part of that money was the fact that you could tell she hadn't read the entire note about what she was welcoming. Because in the <laughs> middle in the middle of her welcome, she says, oh, yeah, and Esri's going to have lots of friends she's going to be playing with. And you could see her look down and go, Julian and Miles and Kate go, oh, my gosh, you've got, you have everybody from DS9 in there. <laughs> like, yeah, yes. we're kind of nerds. Yes, we do. <laughs> That's just kind of how we roll. It's what we do. More fun that way. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. So when we last left you guys, you were walking out of the yawning portal and making your way towards the skewered dragon. Right as we leave, um, Chrysanthemum's going to like tug on Rolona's sleeve and be like, it's okay if we take our time. I need, I need a break in between drinks. <laughs> I'm just going to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm good. I, I just, I, I, I could use the time. Oh. Okay, I have to know for personal records. Um, at some point, has Rolona had to carry Chrysanthemum back from a park bar crawl? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Rolona would be absolutely okay with that. She'd probably be singing some song while doing it. <laughs> Chrysanthemum knows her limits, but she, she gets caught up in the moment. And she doesn't always respect them. <laughs> Especially if I, we're, ha we're having a good time. I know my limits. <laughs> I just ignore them. <laughs> I mean, she wouldn't like just get trash on a regular basis, but it, you know, things. It's things a Tuesday. You you're trying. You're trying occasion. different drinks. Stuff, something. Sometimes something is stronger than you were expecting and hits you a little harder. <laughs> it happens. There's not a lot of wiggle room when you're small sized. I can respect that. I can respect that. You make your way down. Three drinks in, she's a druid. <laughs> As you make your way down towards the dock wards, you come around a corner and are immediately stopped um, by a group of the town watch. And they've got their, they're kind of staying with their hands out. You have to go around. Another block down. The streets, streets closed. Take another streets block closed. down. This right next to where the uh, where it is. No, you got a ways to go still. Um, as you glance past the the city watchman, you see uh, a half a dozen corpses laying lined up on the side of the road, and on the opposite side of the street, um, there are three blood drenched humans uh, kneeling with the guard standing next to them, kind of watching them. Carry on. I, we should probably keep it moving. Yeah, i go around, I think. Ooh, Actually, right. uh, is, uh, is Rolona still covered in blood from the Sturge? Her own blood? Probably. You know how I am about bathing, so. I may, I, I guess we established, I make sure everybody knows how you are about bathing. <laughs> Very musky. <laughs> <laughs> that, that earthy, that natural that earthy. earthy aroma. <laughs> you know, most lizards can just, you know, fix that right up. <laughs> wizard. Wizard, wizard spirit fingers. Yeah, that's not something your wizard can do. <laughs> are you sure your wizard specializes oh, shit, on blowing you are a things wizard. up sorry that wasn't calling you out that was like sorry <laughs> no i was happy to hop in on that <laughs> yeah yep your wizard does not have prestidigitation no worries there but she does have booming blade which is all its own kind of fun mm -hmm. <laughs> for the record that's when you cast it on somebody um and if you hit with your weapon and that that target moves five feet or more before at the end of its next turn, it takes additional damage. Cool. So it's a good thing to com combo with your uh, rapier. Fantastic. And it's a cantrip. You can do it every action. That's a solid cantrip. Mm -hmm. So good ones to think about. 
So that being the case, um, anyone else going to say anything to the watch? They do not seem to notice in the low lights um, as you trunge through the snow that Rolona is covered in blood. It could also be that she threw a heavy cloak on because, again, you are trunching through the streets in the middle of winter. <laughs> I, I'm are sure we she all a little bloody? Did, Do, are we all a little bloody? Did we all get hit by the surges? Because I know I'll just I'm surge a off bloody. somebody. Yeah, I think everyone got hit at least once. So we're all we're all a little earthy. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been we've been rough and tumbling. Yeah. Okay. Um, can Raylona press the guards to see what happened? Sure. What do you what, what do you offer to them as you want to know more? Um, probably just like a curiosity thing of like, a, so what's going on down there? Hmm. Raylona's right. pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> Guard kind of glances over. Nah, just a couple of ruffians not knowing to keep their fights off the streets. Good enough for me. Yeah, I've been seeing way more of it lately than we should be. Why is that? Sure. Yeah. Weather, maybe. People get a little bit crazy locked indoors most days. Yeah, something like that. But right on. we'll get these three out of here and. Things will be back to somewhat normal. Maybe once the snows have melted off a bit and some decent weather again. Yeah, we're, are we near, like, right in the middle of winter or kind of near the end of it? Yeah, you're actually still pretty early on into it. There's a, there's a lot of optimism in the making it through <laughs> the winter. <laughs> Uh, did you guys want to keep going? Yeah. yeah. All right. As, as you were off. Later. No, thank you. We kind of look at each other and watch as you trunge off around the corner. Uh, you make your way down a few more roads, streets, a few more turns here, turn there. You eventually find your way down onto the corner of Zastro Street and Filet Lane. Now in the dock ward. As you, as you cross over from the, the regions where the Yawning Portal sits, um, the roads become tighter, the buildings become taller, and the street lamps become further apart. In addition, about every third lamp is no longer lit, leaving long shadows and dark alleys. The air smells of salt and excrement as you work your way along, punctuated periodically by the smell of slightly rotted fish. Bleh. <laughs> Chrysanthemum is not impressed. <laughs> Arkira's going to put on a cloak, a hood on her cloak, kind of pull it around her so she doesn't smell anything as badly. <laughs> Marlona just kind of checks herself, realizes it's not her, and shrugs it off. <laughs> That's the spirit. Seeing this, Arwen says, don't worry, it's not you this time. <laughs> She's concerned by her party members all, like, covering their noses. <laughs> It'll uh, SB on our guard. Lots of things lurking in those shadows. As you come up around, as you come to the corner, one shop sticks out among all the other. Its facade is a deep purple with yellow inlays. The sign above reads in ornate letters, Old Zablob Shop. And sitting in the middle of the main front window is a stuffed beholder. Oh, man. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but beholders are like large, right? Large oh, size. Yes, it. I mean, it's like massive. It dominates the entire. You excited? Yeah. The it's a hell of a thing there. So, question. Mm -hmm. 
were we given the 40 gold to start or are we being paid after? Because that's a pretty cool ball doll. <laughs> it's so fluffy. I'm going to die. <laughs> While the official adventure is not completely clear on this, I believe the intention is that this, in this case, the word stuffed is in the context of taxidermied. Not plushy. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it still applies. Somewhere. We couldn't even haul that thing back to your room. <laughs> oh, now that sounds like a challenge. You have to get a team. <laughs> and to answer I'm the question, at the party. <laughs> you were paid in advance. Aww. So you, you do you were given a bag, a, 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 a purse of 40 gold. Uh, back at the yawning portal. <laughs> well, this might be a good opportunity to uh, stop in and get some supplies. Yeah, certainly supplies. seems to be calling to me somehow. Maybe it's the, well, everything. <laughs> Maybe it's the well. Of... <laughs> what kind of shop is it? Um, it's a little hard to make out much in the shop through the window, given that most of the window is taken up by the previously mentioned taxidermied beholder. But you can see, um, if you wipe off some of the, the glass, you can see the, the shop is mostly full of glass cases and dis and curio displays. Uh. I feel like we should maybe have picked up some healing potions somewhere, or that might have been a good thing to... Yeah, I wonder if uh, any sort of adventuring supply store or general supply store would be open at this hour or in this neighborhood we might have just like in walked past everything yeah. raylona's gonna start heading for that shop Jerky chrysanthemum's gonna her arm and arm Chrys chrysanthemum's <laughs> yeah. gonna follow but she's gonna kind of like eye the thing in the window i'm guessing she probably hasn't ever seen a beholder like she's probably heard about them but she's kind of like dang that's that's kind of big you could fit easily inside its mouth. Yeah. I'm picturing like those giant fiberglass whales at the aquarium. And you're just like, that's a lot bigger than they look on TV. That's, yes. That's the kind of, she's kind of like, hmm. That we is... have, oh, I was going to say, uh, do we, do we know anything about beholders as these characters? Um, you can have heard anything you want. Big is one thing, but uh, eyes are the problem. Magics and lasers and all sorts of stuff shooting out of it. All sorts of party tricks. I think, yeah, let's say that. Uh, wasn't this uh, Floon guy something of a like monster guy himself? I might have frequented a shop like this. That's a good thought. Owner might know him in any case. Worth him, worth popping in to ask. Yes, quite. Raylona's still going. Yeah, she pulls the door open. <laughs> um, yes, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> a, a cloud of lavender-scented purple smoke trails out the shop's door as you peer inside. Every wall is painted purple, and every dusty knick-knack on the shelves dyed a deep velvet. A hairless old gnome sitting cross-legged on the counter wears plum-colored robes. His cheeks are decorated with nine purple face-painted eyes. The gnome, oh. the gnome lowers Sorry. a pipe and exhales a cloud of lavender smoke before raising a hand. Hail and well met! Come browse the shelves of the most curious curiosity shop in all the world! I'll, I'll say. Does he I, even know what he has? I imagine so. Yeah, uh, Drumir will start looking around at the various uh, displays. Chrysanthemum is going to go and like very close to and slightly behind Drumir and just kind of like keep one eye. Towards where the where the beholder is, like 
keep throwing glances that way. Out of curiosity, are the tattoos similar to the eye tattoos on the other person we saw earlier today? Uh, they look like they're painted on with like a face paint. Oh, okay. Like makeup. Gotcha. Oh, oh, quite a band. I see. How can I help you? Are you looking for that special edge in a fight? Uh, perhaps. What? It, what is it that you sell here? I assume this was a uh, museum of sorts. Oh no, no, no! We sell all kinds of curiosities and and well items. Anything and everything uh, you could possibly need. Was there something in particular we were looking for? Um, so did we split the 40 gold ten, uh, four ways for 10 eight? Seems fair. Um, Drumir is going to see. Drumir is going to keep putting himself on mute. Oh, did I not? Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, Drumir is going to see if he can procure himself some extra daggers because he finds himself in reasonably short supply and, you know, it's always good to have a couple extra knives on you. Um, okay, so for daggers, as you start looking around to try to find something that makes that would fit... Let's see what he has in the way of a da of daggers. Uh, uh, let's see. Ah, he um, you go over to one case and he uh, kicks himself off the the counter and kind of shuffles over next to you. He's ah. Now this this is a particularly interesting dagger. You'll notice the inlay along the blade itself. Dwarven runes, would you believe? Uh does it appear dwarven to me? Uh yes. I would. Oh yes, a very, very special item, as you can see. Also, the pommel bears, I believe, an actual sapphire. Uh, as I have some, uh, stone cut, there's stone cutting work for like a gem. <laughs> I like eyeball that. Yeah. Actually, I think I have gem cutter or jeweler's tools, so I might <laughs> be able to you know, give myself a discerning eye to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a decently cut. I mean, you don't want to put something great at the back of a weapon that you might ever use. Uh, but the closer you look at it, the, the more it's like, oh, that's a really, like, solid, like, that's a nice, maybe this is more of a decorative blade as you look at it. Goes, and now, I understand it comes with quite a story to it. I don't know the story myself. I have not had time to research. But you'll notice the runes spell out the family name Greyblade. Uh, is that the case? No, oh, yeah. I see bow and smoke up my I I, I squint at it Huh. And starts like poking Drumir. Hey, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Huh. Um, I roll my memory back to see if I can remember anything about any sort of uh, family heirloom or anything like that, or if it's just maybe something someone uh, in the clan crafted. Okay, you tell me. Uh, probably not an heirloom. That'd be something not great to lose. But, uh, you know, maybe one of the fancier daggers. Okay. Yes. Oh, you seem interested in it. I, it is hard to part with. I consider it. A, I don't feel I have fully researched it. It's very difficult to part with something I haven't fully researched. But I think for a, a small fee of, of 60 gold, I could be moved to part with it. Well, I mean, that's quite a price for a dagger. Oh, but a dagger was stored. And again, look at the workmanship. It is well crafted, but uh, I'm going to be slinging this thing around a corner. I might never see it again. Oh, oh, that would be a shame. Indeed. 
thing seems more I mean, ornamental to than to spend uh, 50 useful. gold on a dagger you don't see again. That's that would be challenging. I'd I would save this for more of that that sticky sticky than the throwy throwy. <laughs> Even still, one would want to be very careful, wouldn't want that gem popping Exactly. Off. At 48 gold, I mean, it would make quite a conversation piece. <laughs> well, I do find myself a little light on coin at the moment, so... Well, uh, if Perhaps you... if I find myself back in Waterdeep anytime soon. If you find yourself in possession of that 45 gold it costs, you are welcome to come back and claim it. I will cons I will keep it in the back of my head. He closes the case and, and looks at everyone. Was anyone else looking for something in particular I might possibly have in stock? Other interesting bits of knickknacks and other such things? Hmm. Relona is kind of interested in um, that beholder still. <laughs> So really just standing there going, I, I want I want to know where it came from. Like, what is, what's the story here? Ah, uh, yes. That came with the shop. Oh. Simple. Quite a bargain, then. It's a bit of an eye catcher. Isn't it, though? Quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Do you I, know where it came from? Are there things like that here in Waterdeep? Oh, gosh, no. Whew. I mean, there's that one. Chrysanthemum looks very relieved. Drakir is not quite convinced, but goes along with the story anyway. Yes. No, I have heard rumors that that thing's name is Zablaba. And that's how the shop became named. Oh. So it was named that before you came to own it. Well, to be completely honest, I did try to change the name of the shop, but um, everyone just kept calling it the old Zoblob shop. So it seemed silly to fight it. The you place already push? has a reputation. Hmm. Do you sell any potions? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not one for consumables. However, I might be able to find something among my curios that we could, excuse me, perhaps make uh, worth your while to pick up. I'll nod. I'm interested. And he goes over to a case and uh, opens it up. Do, do, do. That's what I'm looking Ah, oh, now this, this little bit. And he pulls out this p white piece of ivory about yay big. Now this, this fang is said to impart mysterious properties on anyone who should wear it about their ankle. Interesting. What mm -hmm. kind of properties? Well, there's a bit of a lack of data on that front. It is rather large. But I do believe with one of your stature and imposition, as he gestures at Relona, it wouldn't hardly slow you down a bit. So just three or four gold, I'd be happy to perhaps move it. I could even help you tie it on myself. You know what? Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to take it. <laughs> Sold. Excellent. He goes over and starts to fill out a, uh, a a bill of sale. If you could just make your mark here and here. Right. And then initial here. And he turns the page a couple times. And then I do need you to mark here and put today's day. The liability. I'm, I'm going to turn to my group and ask what today is. Nobody knows. <laughs> Isn't that always how it works? <laughs> yeah, it's the third day of winter. <laughs> it's, there you go. Winter third. And welcome everybody who came in with that other pond. How, uh, hopefully your D&D &D game went well. My name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir. We are playing through, as you can see, 
Dragon Heist, um, a wonderful official D&D adventure, which I've slightly tweaked because that's what good DMs like to do. Um, and we are shopping at the Zoblob shop on our way to the Skewered Dragon. Um, Zoblob shop is so named because there's a taxidermied beholder in the front window. That's not ominous. Not spooky at all. Not Just a bit. Kind of terrifying. And Lunar, hello. So much fun playing with you uh, last week. That was that was some fun times. Lunar Lunar played this amazing paladin who was just kicking butt and taking names despite being terrified of everything. <laughs> and that's what bravery is. The better part of valor. Mm. Yep, and so you sign it all off and he closes the book and then proceeds to move around to tie the massive tooth around your ankle. Uh, leaning over to Sharkia, a uh, Drumir kind of wizard. You think that thing's magic at all? Not really, but if it makes her happy, just let her be happy. Question. Can I, could I cast a ritual spell while we were walking, or do I have to, like, stop and do that? What ritual spell were you going after? Oh, I was thinking about detect magic to see if the tooth is actually magical. Uh... I forget what the duration of rituals usually take about an hour to cast. So you'll need some time to sit and study detect, it. Detect magic says up to 10 minutes. Right. That's a duration. And that's dur okay. That's if you do it as a casting as one action. I think ritual spells. Got it. Is it, is it an hour for rituals? I okay. I think so. Um, I can it's double It's an hour that. or it's 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah, I forget how much. It's a chunk of time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It it's, doesn't say on the spell, which is annoying. It is. That's why I, I just searched ritual cast. Because um, the EMB Beyond uh, can sometimes really help with this. It's fairly useless. Well, it is and it's not. Because if you have time to do it. Um, uh, we're going to say it takes at least 10 minutes. Okay. And that's that's not the kind of thing you can do while walking around. Okay, cool. Um, you'd have to sit down and kind of like s basically study it. Unless you, yes, okay. unless you want to burn a spell slot to cast it right now. No, I'm going to put that on my mental to-do list. Yeah. At first level, you don't have that many spell slots lying around. <laughs> no, I'm not wasting a spell slot on that. <laughs> there are other places I can see. Hmm. Yeah, I learned the hard way that on Solasta, the D&D video game. There's a separate button for ritual casting versus regular casting. Oh. Yeah, I burned a lot of spell slots. <laughs> and yeah, you That's can. That's annoying. Yeah, you can insta cast it. It's a one action, so six seconds. If it's prepared and you want to burn a spell slot on it, but we're not doing that. Yeah, um, no. Yeah. So Rolanda gets it tied around her ankle. She's feeling good about that. You already. F you know what, Chickadee? Do me a huge favor. Yeah. Why don't you just roll um, roll Rolona's uh, intelligence, please. Just make a straight-up intelligence check. <laughs> Perfect. You know what? You actually feel like you are moving faster. Like, you can feel... Like, you just feel bouncier all of a sudden. Like, you could, you know... Like a little kid with new sneakers. Look at how fast I can go. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and we have confirmation, for, thanks to Google, as opposed to D&D Beyond, it's 10 minutes plus the level of the spell. That sounds right. I didn't think about Google. I, I underestimate the power of Google. Um, but yes, yes, that psychosomatic effect has fully kicked in. And you are like, yep, yep, this works. This works. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. He, uh, Zablab looks around at all the rest of you. So what else might I find interest you all in? Surely, surely your coin purses must feel weighted down. And with all of these trinkets to pick from. Would he He's... mayhaps have rings with magical properties? Rings with magical properties. As he, he opens. special ability. Opens up a case and looks at it. Well, now, this is a very special piece. And he pulls out a 
the queen piece from a chess set that is in finely blown glass. Now, I have on very good authority that this particular piece of artwork imbues upon he or she that carries it a guaranteed regal stature. Regal stature meaning I just look regal or others will think so? Oh, quite a bit of both. Hmm. More, of course, let's be quite honest with each other as purveyors of magical oddities. The latter is clearly more important. Fair, fair. And again, three gold and you could add it to your collections knowing that it's on your person and that the radiance of the queen of the battlefield itself is with you. Hmm? Well, Sharkira could use a confidence boost. So she says, what the hell? Give me the queen. This guy's good. He's good. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, perhaps if you'd like to trade just two more gold, you might also add to your collection this. Now, this coin comes from a desert land far, far to the south. Very hard to find. But I like you. And you seem like the sort that would appreciate a rare coin in your collection. Does it do anything fancy? It can be traded in that desert land for goods and services. As regular gold can? Well, yes, but not because you, you can't just take water Davian gold everywhere. I mean, you can, but, but it's not as respected. This, this coin establishes you as a far traveler. It creates the clear statement that you are someone who has been a great number of places, and was able to save coin from those places. People respect that. Even just having this among Water Davian coins, as in, oh, where did that come from? Think of what kind of confidence that would radiate to anyone who watches you count your coin out. They would wonder, who is this person? From whence has she traveled that she has these rare coins? Well, isn't that the purpose of the queen that I just purchased? Think of the synergy. <laughs> I think I'll pass on that for now. <laughs> I, no, that's again, you're, I understand. I understand. She'll come around. Just give her a minute. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, Drumir oh. will ask Chrysanthemum. Uh, are you you thinking about anything? I was hoping maybe you could uh, spot me some gold. You, you know I'm good for it. Yeah, I know you're good for it. How much you need? Well, looking at that dagger, I think I can talk him down on the price. But uh, not sure how much. He seems to quite like it. It does have a sapphire. I got 25 on me. Oh. Uh, there you go. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll see what Rather I can do. Rather not give you all of it. Of course, but... right. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Uh, good sir. Uh, actually, I don't know that I caught your name. Oh, Zablab. As in Zablab uh, shop. But the... Uh, Holder was Zablab. We're not related. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I just so happen to know a thing or two about the Grey Blades. Oh. Perhaps lower the price on the dagger. I could share with you a great deal of information about them. Oh, well, that's. Well, now, hmm. I, I'm and not you would sure. not be parting with it without knowing its true story. Well, exactly, but to, to part with it for 50 gold still, I feel like, I think I paid that much to put it into the shop. Well, it is quite a nice piece, but uh, I don't know if that's a real sapphire or not. <gasps> you would suggest I would peddle in falsities? 
I would suggest that perhaps the Greyblades, being the clever dwarves that they are, offer a fine array of uh, lookalikes for those who are a little shorter on coin, but still want to have the majesty of a Greyblade blade. I would never peddle in something that I could not guarantee. If I told you it was a sapphire, it is a sapphire. And you're I'm certainly s- not getting it out of here for less than 55 gold. This doesn't seem to be quite the way I was hoping it would. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps if you knew more about the Grey Blades, you might consider that its, its quality, though fine, might not be exactly pure. Perhaps it is a zirconian. You know, per, 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 perhaps, perhaps you and your compatriots should consider a different shop to frequent. Have a good evening. <laughs> well, <laughs> that went in the wrong direction. He starts kind of towards the door with all of you. Oh, oh, well. But yeah, I, I think leaving would probably be good. Xanthem and Pat's um, dreamer on the back. That was a good try. We would go for that. We do actually do that. Not that I think that was actually one of them, but, you know, you didn't need to know that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, shall we be on our way, then? I don't think there's anything else we can do here. I'm good with moving on. I, I got my anklet. I'm good. <laughs> and it Jesus looks Christ. very nice on you. Thank you. <laughs> I would love if everyone could roll me a quick perception check. Perception. So we have a three, a six, a five, and a four. Team. I'm still a little tipsy. <laughs> a little. Yeah, level one. That happens. <laughs> level Busy one happening. how fast I am now. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> She's so fast. Oh, I'm having so I'm gonna have so much fun with that one in a minute. Oh no. Oh no, I know psychology. I have plans for you. Anyway. I, I'd hope so. You're the dungeon master. I... <laughs> Isn't that what we pay you for? I, I, I love the suggestion that I have any of this planned. <laughs> I'm just over here rolling D100. Literally, I'm rolling D100s to see what's in the shop. There you go. If, if your dwarf had the guy and you kicked out, you were about to be offered the ashes of a hero. Ooh. <laughs> what do they do? I don't know, but anyway. And yet you were prepared with a, a chart to roll from. It's called the DM's Guide, man. It's got good stuff. I was really trying to think of a way to help that conversation go better, but I, I was coming up with nothing. <laughs> anyway, um, Shark here will notice that there are tracks in the snow. And what looks like um, it might be some some brown drops of blood outside the shop. I suggest we follow those drops of blood as we are looking for a fallen friend. That's what we're being paid to do. So I feel like are we, we, should follow. we didn't even ask if he knew the guy. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to do that after I, I purchased from him in the hopes that he wouldn't yeah. then be like, well, I helped you. Let me raise the price. But uh, Okay, maybe next time we do that help. first. Okay, Drew Mir? Right, right. Good thinking. Okay. Maybe, maybe we butter him up with some small talk first. That also gets us the information we need to know. Right. Let's try that. Right. Right. Um, but are we actually anywhere near the uh, skewer drag? Actually, as you look down the street, it's about five doors down from where you currently are. You can see a placard with a spear and a dragon on it. That would be it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it could well be our guy. If it's brown, that means it's not terribly fresh and that lines up with two days ago at 
this point, I don't see anyone else on the street that I'm aware of, so I think this is our only lead, and it's heading in the right direction. Sounds reasonable enough to me. Okay, so you're following the 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 footprints in the snow, or are you going down to the, the skewer dragon? Oh, are they not going in the same direction? No, they're not. Oh, boy. Mm. I, I'd say follow the the bloodied footprints. Yeah, so it's the, it's the bloodied footprints to the skewer dragon are back into the shop to ask if he saw anything. I'm kind of interested in the blood, too. Really interested in the blood. We did get kicked out, so I don't know that he'll be able to talk to us. I don't know. If, I, don't I mean, I at up. least I got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> he'll probably talk to me, so... <laughs> Okay. I would follow the bloody footprints if Ray Lona was willing to to check in with our, our guy we just met, just to be safe, just to be sure. Can we do that? It Sounds might like be good if it might be good if Dreamer kinda like gets out of sight. I'll, uh, like he I'll left before Relona goes in. That that might be wise. Okay. So Relona lets herself back into the shop. Looks up. Are you going to insult my trinkets as well? I am here to let you know that I have never moved faster in my life. I told you this, this is, is amazing. Fine quality. Um, also, I do have a question. We're looking for a man whose description I will give. Um, <laughs> and you seem like the sort of gentleman who's seen many travelers through here. This chickadee reaches over to Paul's side of the table, grabs his notes. He is <laughs> the downside to distance gaming. Uh, I have Floon Blagmar, uh, early 30s, red hair, wavy, well-dressed human. Exactly. Just like that. Just like that. Um, he's like, well, uh, you will need to give me a persuasion check. Oh, my strong suit. Yeah, that good old charisma. <laughs> Darn, I should have gone in with you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, now, hmm, I don't normally like to get involved in things that happen on the street because things that happen on the street sometimes come into the shop and this glass is very expensive to fix. Do you have any idea how hard it is to get a good wizard with a spending spell in here? Like, it can be very expensive to get all the glass fixed. But I do think I'd be willing to take a risk and tell you a bit about a particular brawl that may or may not, I'm not saying, that may or may not have happened outside the window at the front of the shop. If, again, for an established customer. And he pushes... Oh, I would a, very much appreciate that. He pushes a little metal urn forward on the counter. For example, a customer who's willing to, twice in a night, purchase an oddity, such as this amazing <laughs> urn containing the ashes of... of... Grey Mane the Great. Ooh. Yes. Renowned swordswoman. Just happens to be a swordswoman. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. yes. Just, and I'm only asking, again, for someone that's starting to grow as one of my regular customers, just for gold. That would establish someone as a regular customer. Yeah, yeah. Do regular customers um get discounts? Maybe like three gold? I think that's fair. I think that's well fair, played. too. <laughs> Slides the urn over to you. Which, what I don't know what Rolona's going to do with a, an urn. I don't think Raylona knows what she's going to do with an urn either. <laughs> but she better take it with her. <laughs> now she feels like she can move super fast. Barbarians love a sail. So, so clearly, clearly Rolona's from the Midwest. The deal. <laughs> do you like this urn? I got it at a discount. <sighs> Anyway, now, for a regular customer, someone that, that I trust with good patronage, I might 
have noticed a particular gentleman, as previously described, um, finding themselves in a bit of a brawl with five or so people in black armor. Hmm. They may have dragged him off and they may again it was very difficult to see it's not well lit out there you know i pay a lot in taxes and they can never keep the lights along this road lit you would think they'd hire a few more light keepers i know it's winter i know it's cold but come on it's a security issue anyway they may have had something that looked like a wing snake on their armor. Well, I see you as a very reliable source. Um, you've done wonderful on the items that you've given me so far. Um, I'm going to trust you 100%. Excellent. Can I interest you in anything else this evening? Not this evening, but you can. you can bet I will return. Good to hear. Have a nice night. Stay warm. It's cold out. <laughs> While we're waiting outside, can I throw a snowball at Drumir? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Chrysanthemum's bored. <laughs> bored halflings are scary. <laughs> Would you be serious? We're on the job here. We got a reputation of. <laughs> and a, a small... kind of rep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say we got a reputation to uphold as Raylona's running around with an anklet, saying she's really <laughs> fast now. <laughs> Should we go fast, guys? I mean, you know, it's it's adventure. All this stuff is magic. <laughs> It wouldn't be the weirdest thing that an adventurer has tied to their leg. Uh, so you, you get out of the... Yep. Uh, you leave the shop? Rulina walks out and comes into a snowball fight. <laughs> I'm going to pick up a lot of snow. <laughs> I'm the urn in, one, urn in one hand and snow in the other. Mix up the snow with the ash. Just, I was going to say, just don't confuse the hands. You're holding each one in. <laughs> Clank. Being somebody with an urn. <laughs> what, what is that? Uh, well, this here is a hero of legend. Ooh, and I am lucky enough. <laughs> I'm just going to open the top of the urn. <sighs> Chrysanthemum like pulls it down and looks inside and immediately sneezes like off to the side. <laughs> Are you allergic dusty to death? <laughs> what is it? It's dusty in there. That would be her ashes. Oh, gross. You should have led with that. <laughs> it's just a tiny hero in an urn. <laughs> well, uh, had he seen anything? Has he seen our guy? Uh, yes. Uh, he oh. said he may have noticed, may have noticed a scuffle outside um, between our our um, man here and uh, some men dressed with cloaks that had an emblem of a snake with wings on it. Seems oddly specific to not remember very well. Well, I mean, he didn't know the color of the snakes. They could be blue. They could be red. And you know how those things Fair work. Point. Um, I searched my memory for, you know, what sigil that might be or you know, if any, any known whatever. That would be a history check. Um, that sounds like a gang that operates in Waterdeep. Uh, I mean, that... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. It, they're a fairly large and established one, but particulars of it are not leaping to, to memory. Anybody else can make a history check if they would like. 
I'll make a history check. Now that he's kind of put that thought out there, like, that's got to be significant. Has anyone heard of that? <laughs> nope. Oh. There you go. The barbarian newbie. <laughs> <laughs> Does Shakira want to take a stab at it to see if she can outsmart the whole party? Why the hell not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Rel Relona will recall uh, that that particular symbol is the um, fighting by notes. Because there's two of them here, and I don't want to get them backwards. Um, that is the logo of the Zentarum, which is a fairly established uh, criminal group that operates throughout the city. And they are easily noted. Their their holdings usually have that wing snake painted somewhere visible, so that people know to eat. like. They it's one of those they mark their territory, so people know not to mess with it. Mm. Well, it looks like our friend is uh, himself a, a powerful enemy, or hopefully he was just a target of chance and hasn't actually pissed off. Zentarum. Zentarum? Mm-hmm. Zentarum. Yeah, and hopefully by looking for him, we're not going to piss him off as well. I have to Only be one careful. way to find out. <laughs> With the urn in your hand. Thump, thump. Thump, thump, thump. <laughs> uh, why don't we see if we can't That may well be our, our guy. Let's see if we can follow those. Sounds good to me. Um, are we investigating the bloody footprints? Okay. Okay. Who's going to try to follow the tracks through the snow and the mud? How dark uh, is it? Um, it's... Is it day or is it getting on it's, toward night? It's well night at this point. Okay. So the street lamps or any light spells you want to cast are your primary sources of light. I have light. Do we want me to cast light as a cantrip? That would be great. Okay, I'm going to take out my mace and hold it like a torch and cast light on the top or on the tip of it. Solid. And it, bam, lights up the uh, the alley that you're, or the street that you're standing on. Uh, let's see. This is going to be survival. So actually, I'm being first little characters, I think... I think uh, Rolona and Chrysanthemum are your two. Actually, no. As long as Shakira is not leading, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a, a plus one difference, by the way. Um, so who wants to take lead to try to follow the tracks? Um, I generally don't like leading because I'm the smallest, but I'll okay. hold. I'll hold the light. I guess I'll lead then. Okay. Roll survival. Yeah, roll that survival so you can keep you can follow these tracks. <laughs> Pretty average. Yeah, it's good enough. It, it's it's not a complete. You don't end up lost in the docks. It's the nice thing about snow. Yeah, it works. So you make your way along, um, and as you wind your way down and follow this this trail. You can see where um, a couple of times it looks like somebody is being dragged. You can see stretches in the snow uh, that pull out behind him. Uh, and then places where they you can see the extra footprints as they get their, their bearings again to walk with whoever took them. Uh, the snow parts and starts to you know dissipate too much to follow uh, any particular tracks. But you can see down the street just a short distance. 
uh, a warehouse that has been marked with that winged snake. At the street level, there's a, an entrance, and there's also an alleyway that leads down behind it, wide enough that you could fit a cart if you wanted to. I'm curious as to what your plans are now that you've found this place. Down to the loading area or through the front door? I think the front door would probably not be great uh, if we aren't planning to just ask them outright. Uh, but if they they took this guy, they probably wouldn't tell us that they did. Even if we were like, oh yeah, we'll buy the information from them. They wouldn't want to sell it. Or we wouldn't want it. Anyways, I think the stealthy approach is the perhaps a good one. And again, this is kind of a renowned gang, so maybe we should just not get caught. That sounds like a good plan, the not getting caught part. Fair assessment. Raylona is going to disagree, but we'll follow along. <laughs> so what's your plan? Well, I, can, I can scout ahead if uh, see if I can find a, a entrance there. I'll tell you that's probably for the best because I am not very stealthy. Okay, right so up. You're sneaking down along the side or... Real yeah, quick gonna... before he does that, um, I'm going to walk up to the front of Drumir and like beckon down like I want to tell him something. And as he gets on my level, I take the palm of my hand and like plant it in his forehead and I'm going to give him um, Blessing of the Trickster. Ooh, nice. So you have, <sighs> uh, if you're willing, um, you can have advantage on dexterity checks for one hour. Wonderful. That will be super helpful. Uh, I'll say, all right, well, I'll, I'll scout ahead. If I start yelling, uh, come save me. You got it. Manage on dexterity stealth checks. Well, Sounds that, good. Uh, that works. I will uh, find my way over. Uh, I need no light as I have dark vision, which is a handy thing for a rogue to have. Okay. Um, and I'll look down there, see if I can find a door or a window to climb into or something like that. Yeah, let me um, see. Uh, yeah, let's put it there. Let me show you what you find. Open it up. Uh, zoom out. Nope, too much, too much, too much. Nope, that's not what I want. That's what I want. Eh, nope. All right, can you see the Jamboard? I linked it. Uh, on, we, I linked we, it on we, Discord. I think. I never linked it on Discord. That would have been useful. You did. That would have been useful. Let me. Let me link it, and then I'll. Well, I don't know what I'm doing right now. It's been one of those nights. Was it posted like uh, last week or two weeks ago? Or it might whatever? be. There we go. Let me one thing at a time. Shump. All right. And then let me pop over to this button and then do that. And now the Jamboard is over in our Discord. And then I can pop over here and I can actually take out it so everybody can see what you see. Wham. Ooh, nifty. There we go. Ah, and I have to tell my pen that it should stay in one monitor because it wants to do all the monitors. And it should not because I can't write when it does that. Okay, there we go. So this is the staircase, the kind of the pathway you go down. There's a fence. A gate, a fence, a big door, and a window, and a little door. And then kind of like an earthenwork and buildings up above back here. Excellent. The party is back here. 
Um, I'm going to go up to the gate and see if it's unlocked, just in case. But otherwise, trying to be sneaky, trying to keep a lookout for anyone yeah. on lookout. Roll me that stealth check, would you? If you haven't already, let me look to see what we've got. With advantage. Which, if you right-click on it, you can pick advantage. We played... We, we, we used D&D Beyond for, like, a year? Before we knew that was the thing? That saves a lot of work. I tried that, but it didn't work. So I'll just roll a second one. Also a legitimate strategy. That's way better. Okay, let's see. 16. Okay, no problem. Um, the gate is unlocked. Well, there you go. Um, giving it a quick eye to see if I think it'll make a lot of noise. Uh, assuming it's well, I, I guess it'd be quiet. I will slowly try to open it. Okay. Yeah. Get slides open relatively quietly. Yeah, it's a, okay. the, the, the most noise is the crunching of a little bit of snow as it's pushed open. All right. I will try to make my way over to uh, the window to see if I can peek in. Okay. Um, the windows are like caked in dirt and grime. You can kind of start to wipe away at one of them a little bit to see inside. You realize it's on both sides. Um, and there's no appreciable light inside. Looks for the most part abandoned. Um, and this seems to be just like a fixed window or something that might be able to open. Give it enough. Oh, uh, well, any window can be opened. It's just how loud you <laughs> want to be. Right. Something, something a little bit quieter than breaking glass. Uh, give me another stealth check. <clears throat> there. See, you got it to work. Uh, yeah, you can jimmy this open without too much. I would like to do so. All right. You jimmy it open. Uh, I will uh, go through the window and see what I see inside. Okay, doke. You climb through the window. And I'm going to do... That is what you can see from where you are. Bum, 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 bum. Eh, about that size. Close enough for government work. Okay, so uh, it's dark. There are stairs that go up here. And it's just piles and piles of crates. Give me a perception check. Hey, Vishon. We are uh, we are exploring an abandoned warehouse. We're hoping it's abandoned anyway. Okay, you don't really hear any motion. It just seems like a quiet abandoned warehouse. If there's someone being held captive here, they're they're keeping it very much on the DL. Um, not wanting to get my. Uh, do I think everyone might be able to? Well, let's not risk it yet. Uh, <laughs> right? I'm like, I want to keep them close in case, you know, things go poorly. But I also don't want them to cause things to go poorly. So um, we're going to sneak forward. We're going to try to get to those stairs, see if I can uh, find my way up to the top of those. Okay. Um, as you start to creep over that direction, you can see that you're coming out from under an overhang. And that framing, the stairs go up to a catwalk that frames the second floor. So you can look down into the, uh, the, the main warehouse. Seems like a good vantage. Yeah, uh, let me try to find my way up there. Okay. And... Do, do, do. So I will go ahead and put this on the map. 
So I'll finish this one for your reference. Doink. And then I'll go ahead and give you the upstairs. As you creep your way up there. Da -da 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 -da. Select. Yoink. That'll work. There you go. So, lower mm -hmm. floor, upper floor, and there's a little bit of a, let me kind of just drop this on that map too. You can make out this door. What the? Nope, try that again. Try that again, Noir. Try that again. There it is. Well, thinking to myself that I don't see any uh, individuals tied up on the open floor here. The only other possible place it could be would be behind the door. So we're going to check the door, see if I can uh, see if it's unlocked, see if I can open it quietly. And if it is locked, if I can unlock. Okay. So you're going to this this door that leads off the uh, the warehouse floor. That one. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. As you uh, you approach the door, and you prepare to you know get put your ear against it to hear anything, the door flies open. That's that's the exact opposite of what I want to happen. Four cloaked I... figures quickly start to come through the door, like looking left and right. They like to dive behind some kind of cover. <laughs> Uh, give me a stealth check. That's a pretty good check. A one and an eight. So Let, happy for that. Let's see how these guys do. You're welcome. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, 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 do, 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 do. Uh, let's see here. I know they're in here. That's what I'm looking for. And let's see. Perception. Bink. Okay. Um, they pour into the, the warehouse and fan out, uh, walking right past you in your hiding spot. They squawk and bay as they start to move around making crow-like sounds. Periodically, one of them um, will squawk something like, tie the pretty one! Tie up the pretty one! I have so many questions. Um, well, uh, that's, that's encouraging. And then or one of them smacks the other one for saying it, and it kind of back at it. Um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can, uh, um, if it looks, are they hanging around the door on, or are they just kind of fanning out around? They're all like, they they're all looking around. Uh, two of them head down to the main floor and start rifling through boxes. So there will be one here and one is here and one is here and one disappears around this corner and we're going to make the blue dot that letter D that's our dwarf chilling there. So it looks like I might be able to, while they are otherwise occupied, slip into the room. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to try to do that. Cool beans. Give me another stealth check. Ah, yeah, no problem. Totally preoccupied. Totally preoccupied. They don't see you at all. Don't. Yeah, you get right past them, and you duck through the door, and you're in this lovely little lobby vestibule. 
And there's a door off to the uh, one side and a door that leads look, uh, presumably back onto the street. Uh, it'd be onto the street, even though we're on the second level? Because oh, it went down. It went down. Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, open the door to the outside um, and see, uh, see if it is the door to the outside, having closed the door behind me. Yeah. Um, I will... Uh, Demir pops the door open and, like, there's the party standing on the street going, what's up? Hey. Quiet, but come here. Uh, Chrysanthemum starts to head that way. I'm gonna follow. Um, as as they're like coming in next to the, I said, four robed men out there. Keep this door closed. I'm gonna check over here. Are you wanting us to come inside or wait outside? Oh, sorry. I was going to have you guys come into this this sort of entrance way, gotcha. kind of make sure this door stays closed, and then I'm going to check the other door. Okay. Chrysanthemum will do that. Okay, so everybody that's not the dwarf is now standing in this little 15 by 15 room. Watching, watching the door for anything interesting. Can everybody roll me a stealth check, please? Is it dark in here or light? Well, that depends. Like are, are you there? Well, I was going to say, do you want me to extinguish my mace? <laughs> I I would find that to be very convenient. Uh, and okay. then maybe you could just turn it back on in case something goes untoward. But, you know, okay, I'll here, dispel, I I'll dispel. I'll dispel light, but I won't be able to see anything because I don't have dark vision. I think I'm only one Actually, does uh, I think does I'm the only one who doesn't? Yep. Yep. Ah, oh, neat. Poor half. So I'll, I will. I know. I will extinguish my light and then like put my back against a wall. <laughs> well, if you leave the door open to the street, you'll get a little bit of light from the street. Okay. But yes, uh, Shakira has dark vision as a dark elf. Rolona has it as a half elf. Dwarves are dwarves. Okay, so let's see how we all did. Uh, uh, 11. Stealth. Oh, 13. I have disadvantage on stealth. I, oh dear. Because of my scale mail. Because of that think. armor. So, yep, so roll it again. Yep. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Luck is with you. You're yes. doing okay. Uh, let me. Boom. Uh, all right. That's good for now. Always blind. Well, you know, is what it is. It is. And our, I'm in a campaign with Shan, and I am also the only party member without dark vision in that <gasps> campaign. Oh, that's yeah, rough. <laughs> that's rough. I I feel for that. Yeah. I really do. Okay. Uh, Jameer pops a door open and finds some ransacked offices. Nope, that's not what you find. Forgot to copy. I, I, I highlighted it. I forgot to hit the copy button. That's it. Whoop. And then we'll just tuck it right. Close enough for government work. Way better than... Um, okay, draw a room that's 15 by 20. Yeah, the, the offices have been thoroughly tossed at this point. All right, so it's possible. Okay, so I will pop back out and say, all right, he's not in there. I think those guys are looking for him. So they might not be part of the game. I'm not sure what's going on, but... There's another area we haven't checked yet. I guess just stay here and again, if I start yelling, please come help me. Good idea. I'm not saying I'll get caught. I'm just saying it'll be sure. four on one. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna do great.
Oh, and Vashan, thank you for throwing that host up there. It's good to get more people in on the game and partaking with our evening. I'm going to like uh, quiet, like whisper. Also, I can't see nothing. So that's great. Ilona's just going to put a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> I'm going to like grab her hand. <laughs> Okay, so Jameer's doing going where now? Uh, assuming that they're there, I'm going to try to sneak out and uh, knock this guy out. I have no idea how plausible that is, but we're gonna we're gonna try. All right, give me that stealth check. It's in the process of like moving things out of that box and stacking them. That's a pretty good roll. Is it good enough? Did okay. you use advantage? That was with advantage. He rolled two sevens. That's two lucky sevens. Yes. It was very well established. Um, you get up behind him, and he hasn't noticed a thing. Uh you can go ahead and make your attack. I'm going to go one and two. Do that for my notes. Oh, yeah. Uh, give me give me the damage. And you obviously get your sneak attack for seven. All right, let me, I don't think you'll see these because they're not officially in combat yet. Oh, those are the characters I want to encounter. Oh, what do you know? It did. And then the seven. <sighs> um, as you skewer him silently, the one coming around the corner from this room sees you and lets out a massive squawk and a caw. And of course the one you stabbed also starts to scream having had his kidneys hit. And stealth games make it look so easy. <laughs> I guess those are trained assassins that I'm like, you know, I took a couple courses. Something like that. Uh, copy image. Uh, for the record, he says, dropping onto the uh, jam board, this is what you just stabbed. Uh, thank you. Now that you can kind of see it up close, they will squawk and they will scream. Um, the two down below are going to start to make their way one of them's heading up the, to climb up the boxes up this direction. This one's coming up the stairs. This one's coming at Dramir. This one's going to obviously fight for his life. Dramir is standing right, yeah, right there. And the party are all quietly hiding in the next room. So that begs the question, will the party get to Dramir's defense? Or will these four crow like creatures swarm him and turn him into some sort of gibbets. We'll have to wait a week to find out. Oh no. Oh. Ah. Of course. <laughs> on a typical Tune in next week. Yeah, we're coming up on ten o'clock and in a typical week typical week I would say we can make it till ten thirty, right guys? Um but coming off of my booster shot and coming off of four hours of cleaning out the garage, and coming off of having the clocks shift, uh, I gotta call it here. That's absolutely Rob. fair. This is this is a good place to call it. I yeah. kind of feel like that. I'm kind of a grandma, like early bedtime. So <laughs> same, <laughs> same girl, same. <laughs> Respect. I'm a night owl, and then pay for it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Well, it's again, it's all three of those for me all at the same time. And I, I'll be honest, my first, my first two, I really, I didn't really feel, but the booster has got me in a bad way this time out, but I got my booster and my daughter got her first and we are on our way to have the whole family vaxxed. 
which is fun. Yay, science. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, I get to get boosted because I am surrounded with a Petri dish of disease called a high school. Right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. children. Yeah. Teena <laughs> teenagers. I mean, same so, thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Petri dish of, of disease. Um, so that all being said, um, we should probably take a lap of the table for those that joined us while we were while we were going. Um, tell us uh, where who you are, where to find you, who you were tonight, and um, one thing you're looking forward to next time. And we're going to go backwards this time, so we're going to let Arwen go first. All right. I am um, Arwen, and I was playing uh, Chrysanthemum, the halfling cleric. And... Uh, I'm really looking forward to figuring out like who these guys are and what they're up to. Cool. Ari? Hi everyone. I'm I am Ari, uh, aka Accio Ari. I stream on Twitch three-ish times a week, and I was playing as Sharkira. Drow, drow wizard, and uh, I am really interested to see what happened to this Floon character, because I recall that he's not the most intelligent of beings. So, I'm I'm really excited to see what Tom Fullery he's gotten himself into. Cool. And Malik. Hey, I'm Paul Malik Jajo, um, and I was playing Drumir Greyblade, dwarf assassin slash, well, less so this time, uh, rogue. <laughs> Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, finding out if uh, Bolo is actually good for his money. That's a, that's a lot of money. That's a fair question. <laughs> hmm. And last but absolutely not least, Chickadee. I am Chickadee, and I was playing Raylona Elvir, uh, the Barbarian. And let's see. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm probably excited to smash all these crates that are in the, <laughs> this map. See how much gold we can get from them. She's gonna Zelda it up. <laughs> I like that. I like it. As yeah. as one does. As one does. Uh, and my name is Rob, aka Lantern Noir. Um, I am here doing Dungeons and Dragons content uh, twice a week, Sundays and Wednesdays at seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now that we got that extra hour, yay! I used to like my extra hour of sleep, and now it's like, oh god, it's so late already. The clock says 10. It feels like 11. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. It's also why I tell my students, never party with people from the opposite coast. Because you're like, God, it's, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And they're like, no, dude, it's 10. <laughs> and that's that's tough. Um, and then so from time to time, I also um, do other game content. Um, not so much now that I'm back teaching full time, but, um, you can find all kinds of stuff there. My socials are linked. I promise you in the, when I post this to YouTube, um, in the description, I'll make sure everybody's socials are listed and that they are listed at all future streams going forward. He said, triple checking to make sure he doesn't already have that done. Cause I may have done that. Sometimes I actually do a good job of being on top of things. Uh, not always, but sometimes I don't have everybody linked yet. I was just looking at, I'm looking at the command I have and it actually only has a couple of people in it. So I have to fix that. So I will get all of that out next time we meet. Um, thank you guys for coming by tonight. It was a lot of fun. It was good hanging out. We should send you somewhere so you can continue to have your fun. And I know just, well, there's lots of places to send you. Um, let me double check who else I have. I know that's on right now. Uh, Cause I think I know who I want to kick you uh, to. I think I know who I kill the echo. Um, but I want to double check before we do. Ooh. Oh, there's lots of good choices. Oh, wait. How far along is she? They're only an hour in. Okay. So I happen to know of this amazing uh, streamer uh, that um, I will. You know what? You just go. You hang out. You check out what she's got tonight. Uh, she's running a game of Masks, which is a superhero RPG. Uh, her name is LB Hackamup. She is absolutely good people um so when you get there um let them know that we said hi i will be incredibly quiet on my end because unfortunately um not for unfortunately 
fortunately, um, I always hang out with my players after a game to debrief, decompress, um, talk about our notes, and make sure that we're all ready to come back next week. So when you get there, tell LBI I said hi. Um, we will be along eventually, possibly to hang out if I don't conk out first. Until then, folks, thank you for coming by tonight. Thank you for being part of the stream. Thank you for everyone that followed. Thank you for everyone that, that supported us by talking about us, retweeting everything that we were throwing out there. We will see you all next week. Till then, stay safe.